live NFL trivia every Wednesday night on Twitch at 9 p.m. Eastern. Come show off your football knowledge for a chance to win cash prizes. Check the link in the description to find out more. And now, on with our feature presentation. When a longtime player, who is one of the greatest players in franchise history, ends up swapping jerseys at the end of his career and winds up finishing things off with another team, it can always be a bit weird. It doesn't necessarily matter how good that player winds up playing with that team. Seeing a player in the wrong uniform is a strange feeling. See Barkowski in a Rams jersey, Joe Namath in a Rams jersey, Johnny Unitas in a Chargers jersey. You get the idea. But usually with things like that, at least one party was ready to move on. The writing was on the wall that that relationship was over. And that's what makes this upcoming situation all the more bizarre. This is New England Patriots cornerback Raymond Claiborne. Prior to the arrival of Ty Law, most people would agree that he was the greatest cornerback in the history of the Patriots franchise. However, after 13 seasons with New England, he ended his career in Cleveland, even though he didn't want to leave, and the Patriots didn't want him to go. Claiborne tried everything he could to stay in New England, and the Patriots tried everything they could to keep him. And yet, Claiborne found his way on another team. Seems weird, right? Well, we're about to find out how that all went down. This is the story behind the strangest free agency moment in Patriots history. Before I talk about the incident in question, we need some context to understand just who Raymond Claiborne is, how he became a free agent in the first place, and why the Browns wanted him so badly, setting up the bizarre moment we're about to see. In the first round of the 1977 NFL Draft, the New England Patriots were looking to improve a pass defense that finished in the bottom half of the league in passing yards and passing touchdowns. On top of that, starting quarterback Bob Howard, who started all 14 games for the Patriots that season, was going to be 33 years old, and probably didn't have a whole lot left in the tank on paper. With that, the Pats spent the 16th overall pick of the draft on a Texas cornerback named Raymond Claiborne. Let's just say that Chuck Fairbanks had a home run with this draft. He had two first-round picks. He was one of them on Stanley Morgan, arguably the greatest receiver in franchise history who would play 13 seasons in New England. And with this pick in Claiborne, he once again knocked it out of the park. He made an impact right away on special teams when, as a rookie, he led the league in yards per kick return, averaging an incredible 31 yards per return and scoring three kickoff return touchdowns. Not only did Claiborne lead the league in this category, but he was one of just six players ever at the time, and the first since Cecil Turner did it back in 1970 with the Chicago Bears, to have at least three kickoff return touchdowns in a single season. Eventually, Claiborne played a regular role in the defense, and was only used sporadically on special teams after that 1977 season. Claiborne played 13 seasons with the Patriots, starting 179 games at cornerback and producing at an extremely high level most of the time. He made the Pro Bowl in 1983, 1985, and 1986. During that 1983 season in particular, he was so good that he received that honor without recording a single interception. Opposing quarterbacks were just that scared to throw in his direction. He had the game-clinching interception in the 1985 AFC Championship over the Miami Dolphins, which sent the Patriots to their first Super Bowl in franchise history. He finished inside the top 10 in the league in interceptions during that Super Bowl season. And by the time his career ended, his 36 interceptions were the most of any player in Patriots franchise history. He still holds that record today, although he's no longer in sole possession, as Ty Law also finished his New England career with 36 picks. Raymond Claiborne was legit, but when the 1990s rolled around, it looked like he was going to have to show off his talents somewhere else. Entering the 1990 offseason, we were still in the infancy of free agency. It was nothing like the free agency we know today. Back in 1990, there was something called Plan B Free Agency. The NFL had 47-man rosters at the time, and teams were allowed to protect 37 of those 47 players. If a player was protected, it was virtually impossible for another team to sign him. The only protected player to switch teams was Wilbur Marshall. However, anyone who was not protected under Plan B could negotiate with any team in the league. There was no right of first refusal, there was no need to report to the original team to give them an opportunity to match the contract offer, nothing whatsoever. If you weren't protected under Plan B, for all intents and purposes, you were a free agent. And in 1990, Claiborne was left unprotected by the Patriots. The Patriots were not a very good team in 1989, going 5-11 and boasting a pass defense that ranked outside the top 20 in a 28-team league in just about every major category. They ranked 23rd in passing yards, 25th in passing touchdowns, 21st in interceptions, and dead last in yards per pass attempt. It looked like the Patriots were going to be in the middle of a giant rebuilding process, and for head coach Raymond Berry, it was tough to see where Claiborne fit into those plans. Claiborne was still playing at a really high level, but the three-time Pro Bowler was going to be 35 years old, and having a cornerback on a rebuilding roster in the latter half of his 30s didn't seem like a great idea, especially when you're trying to cut back on some money. As Claiborne said on Barry, He didn't want me. I took that just how it is. He left me out there. He put me out in the streets. 
With Claiborne on the market now free to go wherever he pleased, he had a few options in mind, including the San Francisco 49ers, who wanted to sign one of the marquee Plan B cornerbacks, whether it was him, Hanford Dixon, Everson Walls, or Leroy Irvin. However, the team that was vying for his services the most was the Cleveland Browns. The Browns did not have a strong secondary in 1989, particularly because the coaching staff wanted to move Hanford Dixon over to safety, but because Anthony Blaylock was poor in Dixon's place, they couldn't do that, and had to live with Dixon at cornerback for another season. By getting Claiborne, they wanted to shore up a pass defense that allowed an abysmal 387 yards per game over their final three games of the season, and got shredded by Jim Kelly and John Elway in the postseason. It seemed like a match made in heaven. And that's where this story gets incredibly bizarre. The Browns wanted Claiborne, and Claiborne seemed very comfortable with the team. With that, the Browns signed Claiborne to a contract worth $675,000. For a 35-year-old cornerback, that was a really good price especially when you consider that the average salary that season was slightly above $356,000. Claiborne was making nearly double the league average and was guaranteed a starting spot in the process. Not too shabby. And head coach Bud Carson was thrilled about the move, saying we think he's at the top of his game or we wouldn't have signed him. It's not like there's been a big decline in his game. He's still got his speed and his burst. The guy's a top cornerback. Pretty high praise right there. So that should be the end of the story, right? After a long stint with the Patriots, the Patriots decide that it's best for the two sides to part ways, and Claiborne can finish out his career elsewhere. However, if that was the case, then this would be a non-story. Because as it turned out, the Patriots wanted him back really badly. As Claiborne was getting ready to sign on the dotted line, the Patriots call. They didn't want to see him go. You see, Raymond Berry had no need for him, but a few days before the start of free agency, Berry was fired as the coach of the Patriots. Long story short, Barry was in a dispute with regards to filling out his staff and his reluctance to use offensive and defensive coordinators. And because of this, just a few days after receiving a vote of confidence from General Manager Pat Sullivan, Barry was fired and was replaced by Rod Rust. And Rust knew exactly what Claiborne was capable of. Rust was the defensive coordinator of the Patriots from 1983 to 87. And that's when Claiborne was at his peak as one of the best cornerbacks in football. All three Pro Bowls that Claiborne made in his career, they were all with Rod Rust commanding the ship on defense. The career-high six-interception season, that was with Rod Rust in charge of the defense. Rust recognized what a talent Claiborne was, and he didn't want to see him walk. With that, even after Carson and company announced that Claiborne was now a Cleveland Brown, Claiborne was reconsidering. Even though Barry wanted him gone, Barry was no longer there, and Rust did not want him gone. And even though Claiborne wanted to go back to New England for his 14th season, the NFL stepped in and blocked it. The Browns were starting to get a bit antsy that their big acquisition and the man they relied on for fixing their poor secondary was no longer going to come to Cleveland anymore. Director of Football Operations Ernie Accorsi said, Until we have the signed contract, nothing is certain. That's why we haven't announced anything. It seemed like a surefire thing, especially with how poorly Claiborne spoke of the Pats after they failed to protect him. Claiborne was stabbed in the back, saying Barry told me I was going to be protected. Then they called me and said I wasn't. The Patriots are cutting back and aren't willing to pay the type of money I feel I deserve. And now with Barry no longer in the equation, Claiborne was seemingly ready to do a complete 180 and go back. The only problem? The NFL pretty much forbid Claiborne from doing this. Under the NFL rules of Plan B free agency, if a player was unprotected, then that was it. That team could not contact the player, let alone attempt to negotiate a contract with them, until the deadline for signing Plan B free agents expired on April 1st. Normally, this wouldn't be a problem since why would a team want to re-sign a player that they left unprotected? That was the whole reason you left them unprotected. You don't really care if they go anywhere else. But this was a pretty unique circumstance, since there was that coaching change that took place in between the events. And the Patriots were screwed here. Even though they wanted him back, and even though Claiborne wanted to come back to the point where he was seriously reconsidering and didn't sign the Browns' contract as quickly as everyone thought he would, Claiborne would have to take a huge gamble if he wanted to come back to the Patriots. And he decided not to take that gamble. After a few days of contemplating and thinking things over, Claiborne decided to accept Cleveland's offer and honor his original commitment. He said that the whole situation was a bit indifferent and bittersweet, and while he was happy that the Browns were putting trust in him, he was sad to leave New England, saying that after 13 seasons there, he had a lot of good memories. Just like that, under some of the weirdest circumstances imaginable, even though neither side really wanted it to happen, Raymond Claiborne was no longer a New England Patriot. That raises one final question. How did this work out for both teams? Let's start with Claiborne. He was supposed to be the answer to Cleveland's secondary to help fix the flaws from their 1989 team. He was not. Father Time is undefeated, and during the 1990 season, 
the 35-year-old Claiborne was showing his age and didn't have a whole lot left in the tank. He had no interceptions and had the worst season of his career. The Browns' pass defense was atrocious, allowing more passing touchdowns than any team in football. And the 1990 season was not just a disaster, but was one of the worst seasons in the history of the franchise, as the team went 3-13, with Bud Carson getting fired after nine games. Claiborne played one more season in Cleveland, but never played again after that 1991 campaign, and never recorded an interception in his tenure with the Browns. As for the Patriots, oh boy. What is there to say about that 1990 season and Rod Rust? They were one of the worst teams in the history of the NFL, going 1-15 with the worst offense in the league, scoring 11.3 points per game, and the second worst defense in the league, allowing 27.9 points per game. They had a point differential of minus 265, getting outscored by an average of roughly 17 points per game. Basically, at the end of the day, neither side benefited here. Claiborne had a bad season and was on a bad team, and the Patriots were really bad as well. Today, Claiborne is remembered as a Patriots legend. He's a member of the Patriots Hall of Fame, rightfully getting inducted in 2017. And outside of high law, you can make the argument that Claiborne is the greatest cornerback in franchise history. And I'm not sure how many people are truly going to complain about that. However, while we remember his incredible 13 seasons with the team, it was the end of his career that was incredibly bizarre considering the circumstances. The Pats wanted to bring him back. Claiborne wanted to come back. And NFL rules basically prohibited his return to the team. In terms of a free agency situation, it doesn't get a whole lot stranger than that. Get your official Jaguar Gear 9 merchandise by going to jg9shop.com and be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, subscribe down below if you haven't already as it helps the channel out a lot, and be sure to check out Twitch every Wednesday night at 9pm Eastern for your chance to play NFL trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. If you want to see videos like this condensed down to 60 seconds, then follow me on TikTok at jaguar9 and subscribe to 60 Second NFL History on YouTube. To see highlight videos of players throughout the history of the NFL, subscribe to JG9 Highlights. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters who help get the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. See how you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.